Hi everybody. Hey. 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 Q and A. I'm Tria Burchard, and this is Matt Miller. And um, we thought we'd leave the back door open for stragglers. Yeah. Close this one. So, I see what the problem is. Um, okay. All right, so this is Tenchi. <laughs> Tenchi panel, go! <laughs> no, I don't think we need a mic for this room. No, I don't think, I don't so, think no. so. If no. you can't hear us, let us know. Yeah, yeah. Theater voice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, theater voice. Theater voice, the yeah, projecting. Uh, what can we share with you? What would you like to know? Yeah. Make sure it's something we remember. <laughs> <laughs> we can maybe... Start with how we got into Tenshi. Okay. Tell that story. No, I tell a start. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I had some of you at the panel before, but uh, so if you heard it before, bear with me. But it was uh, I had never done anime. Didn't know what, what anime was. I just know I knew at the time I was an actor in L.A. trying to get acting work, any kind of acting work. So I knew somebody who told me that they were uh, casting something. It was voiceover. Uh, it was. I, they may have mentioned it was Japanese. I'm not sure, uh, but they gave me the character description. So I made an audition tape on cassette. Just to let you know how long ago this was. <laughs> and ancient technology. Uh, I submitted my cassette tape along with I don't know how many others, uh, and they chose me. And uh, I showed up the first day and uh, didn't know what I was getting into uh, primarily because I didn't. I'd never done ADR, or looping, really, uh, to any extent, and um, that first day was uh, eight hours in the booth of me just going, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> this one's chasing me around, blowing stuff up, and I'm running, and you remember that very first episode, that's primarily what it was, me running from explosions and falling down, and wah, wah. <laughs> that for eight hours. <laughs> Turned out, I just had a knack for matching, uh, you know, acting and matching lip flaps and reading lines at the same time. So I was, I, I don't know why I had this knack. I just did, thank goodness. But it, it, I had a facility to do it quickly and work quickly, and they love you for that because it saves them money. So, so we were off and running. We tried to do the first episode in the booth together, and that was just impossible. Just a disaster. <laughs> Uh, because if you're aware of the technology, you've got a couple of microphones there, and actors, you know, we act with each other. Yeah. See, he we just talked over me, and that's natural. <laughs> that's how people converse. Uh -huh. But you can't do that in a booth, because yeah. then the engineers, what if his take is great and mine's terrible? Well, they can't separate them, so uh, you, you have to do it again. So, so they were all kind of new at it, too, yeah, or they would have known that. Yeah. 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 Big curve. <laughs> Steep learning curve, but we all made it. Yeah. I had to learn how to, you know, roar and bellow without hurting myself. But my sessions weren't usually eight hours. It was just that first day was eight hours. Yeah. So we all sort of learned together how to do this. Yes. And then they were shorter after that. <laughs> yeah, much yeah. shorter. The first studio had a sort of a restaurant in it. I remember that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had a really nice lunch. A really room. nice uh, studio. <laughs> Pop. Yeah. yeah. Pacific Ocean Post. I don't know if there's still there. I remember we were in that one... Uh, recording dock, the one recording room studio, for a couple days in a row. So the next day I showed up, and I assumed we were in the same one. And I whip open the door, and there's uh, Oliver Stone posting. God, what was he? What do you? What would he have been posting? Born on Fourth of July. Yeah, probably. Born on Fourth of July. So Oliver Stone's sitting there posting his movie, and I was like, Oh, wrong studio. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we were down the hall that day. Questions? Yeah. What was the hardest part about actually doing the voice recording for you guys? Just that first part of, of learning, getting that knack down of, of uh, reading the line, then looking up at the monitor, waiting for the lip flaps, and then matching the lip flaps, delivering the line, and acting, and doing Tenchi all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a combination of. Uh, you don't get your script ahead of time. You don't memorize it. Yeah. You walk into the studio and they put it on your music stand, and so it's, it's fresh. Yeah, yeah, and you um, you have to be able to read well, and I I mean that just as it sounds, just read well. Yeah. And then also, like you said, mm -hmm. acting and matching at the same time. So it's a little complicated. You get used to it. But also for me, oh, it was a little harder because, uh, not harder than you, but I did a lot of screaming. 
And that was something I hadn't. I, you have to train to do, and I had not trained, so I needed to go get a little help with that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to wreck my voice. No, no. Coco did a lot of roaring. Yeah, yeah, but um, I did not know how to make it make that. Particular, they wanted that rawr, kind of scratchy oh, sound in my throat, yeah, yeah. and that um, didn't know how to do that at first. But I learned. Yes. And, uh, my question for both of you actually is: um, before you got into voiceover acting, um, what was your acting like, like, and did you think you would get as much gratification out of voiceover acting? Um, well, some of you may know Matt and I both worked in Chicago theater before we moved to LA. We knew each other in Chicago. And um, Chicago's a big theater town. That's what we, we both did there. And I won't answer specifically for you, but I had done a lot of improv theater. I had done Second City and uh, some of the other equity theaters in Chicago. And uh, when I moved to LA, I envisioned a television or film career. And, uh, you know, when Tension Movie Out came along, I thought, well, this is great, because I like voiceover, I enjoy it, but I didn't think it was going to become any kind of... I didn't think that, you know, nearly 20 years later, I'd sit in the room and talk to people about it. Did you think you'd have screaming fanboys? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> There's always that. No, I didn't think I'd have screaming fanboys. I wanted screaming fanboys. <laughs> 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 Actually, this this kind of goes along with what he was asking. When when you guys got into doing Kenji Muyo, were you just kind of thrown into the fandom of what it had become, or did it progress as you guys did it? Because obviously, like the Kenji Forum guys were talking about last night, it became this massive phenomenon of the anime world. So, what was it like for you guys as you know? being the actors and actually receiving all the, the fandom and the fanboys and whatnot? Uh, it was it was a progressive thing. I I, I really didn't realize, and yeah. I don't think any of us really did. I'm only how, just starting to realize. Well, <laughs> uh, to see how big it had gotten and, and continues to get and, and did get uh, as the years went along. I, I think I did my first con in 99, this Anime North up in Toronto. And that was when I really got a taste of. Well, we did that one in LA. That, I know yeah. That before that. Some of the Japanese actors came to that one. Yeah, yeah. So I got a little bit of a taste, but then you go all the way to Toronto, Canada. And I guess in LA, you can be very insulated and think, okay, we'll go up. People are into all kinds of stuff and entertainment. But to go to Toronto and have experienced that sort of fandom, it's like, wow, this is. Yeah. This is then you really sort of realize. A lot of people are watching this and enjoying it, so it's been great. Cool. You had a question, didn't you? Not me, but I have one now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know a lot of people have been talking about Kenji Muyo and how much you like watching, or in your case, listening. So, anything they've done, have you seen all of like the shows? Have you been in all of them? So on and so forth. And have you ever just like criticized yourself looking back on it as you're watching it? Yeah, um, I've, I've seen all the Tenchi, uh, actually I'm kind of proud of it, I like it, you know, I think it's good. I, some of the on-camera stuff I did, I go, oh, I wish oh, I would have yeah. done it differently, you know, and uh, would love to go back and have another shot at that, but I, I, I feel like we had such a, we had a great cast, mm -hmm. great directors, great producers, great engineers, great did everybody working so hard, yeah, great writers to make it work that it did, and I'm not sure I would change anything. Yeah, yeah I don't think I've seen all of them in total, but uh, uh, the ones I have seen, I think, yeah, I think it holds up. Uh, I'd leave it to you guys to judge, but I, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it, yeah, it's pretty fun. Well, it depends on which Well, <laughs> we won't talk about PXB or whatever. <laughs> the only one that's still running. Yeah, yeah. It's still on TV or Netflix, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. Can either of you have a favorite line that you did that just like? <laughs> 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 That's hard. I don't know. Honestly, I don't remember the lines. 
it's a, we never did memorize them. Yeah. Yeah. So, going so they, fast. they don't really stick with you when you don't yeah. memorize them in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, was yeah. A, was there ever a bit like a clip of in character banter that you guys remember? That you just thought was completely glorious. Like when it showed up in the script, you had to take 10 minutes to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> it was last night. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one, there was one, you know, there were always demons and, and monsters showing up, you know, and we were at the house one time and I go to answer the door. Uh, and he says, you go answer it. And I go answer it and I open it up. There's this giant monster that starts blowing stuff up. And I'm running down the hall saying to Ryoko, it's for you! <laughs> I have one. I, it's when uh, Sasani and Ayako's mother comes. <laughs> she thinks Ryoko is Sasami. Oh, you've ruined your hair. Oh, you know. And I think it was Katie Vogt who did the voice. Oh, Sasami! You're terrible! You've gotten old and fat! And she's hugging her. She's hugging Ryoko, and Ryoko's going, Okay, oh, thank you. <laughs> trying to get out of the situation. <laughs> Yeah. Um, do you guys still keep in contact with other cast members in the series? Not too much. Uh, Katie Votes uh, I'm in contact with. She's up at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival in Ashland. She's a company member there. And she and I both, <laughs> bless you, do a lot of theater. Uh, but uh, Debbie Derry, I bumped into Debbie a couple of <laughs> times. And uh, I think I was telling somebody here that I did a con in LA about three years ago called PMX. And Sherry Lynn was there. And uh, Rebecca Forstad, a fourth <coughs> actress who I think had done some filling parts, um, and I can't remember her name. I never had met her before. Mm. Yeah, which is it, which is typical because often you just go into the studio by yourself. Yeah, you remember you're always in by yourself. So and you hope somebody else recorded before you, so you have somebody to work off of. Otherwise, you're just kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's a blank canvas. In this vacuum by yourself, acting and <laughs> reacting and doing all this stuff. And then you'll see. Ouch! People, stop it! Yeah. But there's nobody there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until you come out to the lobby to get a glass of water or something. Say, hey, Patria! Yeah, <laughs> that's true, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, I'll ask a question. Yeah. What is, like, for both of you, what? Remember the names of the only series. What is your favorite series that you've done? Like, what is your favorite one? The Tenchio VA universe, like in Tokyo. Well, the Tokyo, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think Tenchio in Tokyo. That's one of my favorite ones so far, like I've ever watched. Yeah. Like everything was just golden in that in that series. Uh huh. The first movie was pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one? Okay, I don't remember the name of it. Um, but the one where Ryoko goes out into space with uh, is it Kagato? Kagato? And, and she's being bad and she's robbing banks and uh, um, but in the end she's you, you know they leave you hanging and you think you might she might be dying. Yeah. Yeah. Is that universe? Okay. Yeah. I like that one. That was a sad one. <laughs> You had a question, Ben? Um, I, I, you guys probably know, but there was like a new little show running mm -hmm. uh, for Tension Web. It's kind of like a five minute. Four minute up web yeah, episodes or something. Yeah. Like to promote tourism or something like that. Something, yeah. Yeah, I only yeah. watched a little bit of it, but um, is that something you guys think you might be interested in at all? If you guys were approached for that? I would watch it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, if you would like to know more information about Tenchi Muyo Ai, you should talk to the Tenchi Forum guys. Yeah, subscribe to their web, their YouTube to their channel. channel. Yeah, because um, they really, we, they had their forum here yesterday and we watched they showed the episodes of, yeah. and uh, they had done some uh, subtitles. What do you call it, Ray right? Fansub? Yes, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Fan yeah. Um, And, uh, yeah, it looks kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, it's very whimsical, yeah. You guys were able to reprise the role. Great. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you have a question? Yeah. Uh, this one's really for Matt. Um, it's actually a really silly question. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm guessing, like, you know, like, like majority of the characters, like Aieka, Sasami, and so on and so forth. 
out of Tenchi's whole entire harem, who did you like the least, and why was it A? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question. Nicely played, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. At least fair. That's that's kind of mean. I, yeah, um, we, I think it could get kind of whiny at, at times. Yeah. Um, but we were just, you know, it was just all such fun, and everybody was fun. And uh, you know, I, people usually ask us, you know, the usual questions: Who would you want Tenshi to end up with? You know, that one was all that. But it says Ryoko. <laughs> Kinda has to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's but great. it's not gonna happen. I mean, what? it shouldn't happen. It, well, what it, would that do to the scene? It would remove the tension yeah. that's always there. Yeah. One day when Tenchi's king and he needs to decide on who his favorite, you know, pair member is, maybe, just maybe, Ryoko might say, I'll pencil it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think she's defending her plan. Yeah. For love. Watch uh, what she wants. Ben, did you? Yeah. So, what led to you not being recast as Ryoko? That's, that's uh, something that I have not wanted to talk about publicly. It's. Um, I don't think it would be uh, tactful, but it's. It, I love the series. I love the character. I would play it again uh, in a heartbeat. So. <laughs> I didn't know you were I didn't know you were recast when I originally bought it. Because I didn't do any reading for it. I just went and bought it because I'm like, oh, it's done, finally. And then I hear Ryoko. <laughs> well, they hired a, a professional actress who has a lot of anime experience, and I bet you've heard her in a million things and loved her. But you got used to hearing the Ryoko that you knew. And, and, uh, and so it, it you know, may have sounded strange to you. But <laughs> <laughs> were, no, actually, not everybody. There are plenty of people who uh, really like to work, and I've heard her do a lot of stuff. I think she's terrific. Oh, she has done so, a million yeah. things. Yeah, she's done way more anime than I have. Um, she's a total pro. Yeah. You did one of the architect animes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so, you have to be, be kind back. of an architect. <laughs> <laughs> Just <something. laughs> Yeah. You guys watch anime. I mean, it seems like a silly question, but... I don't. I'll be honest. Um, I, I watch Tenchi, but uh, I don't... Act, uh, should I tell you? I don't have yes. a television. I don't watch TV. That's fine. Good. I'm very not related. Tenchi question now. Since you don't have a TV, what's all your furniture pointed at? <laughs> <laughs> house in Pasadena that was built in 1924, and it was before your living room was oriented towards your was, entertainment yeah. center, yeah. and it was oriented towards the fireplace. Mm -hmm. So that's what the furniture is like, and that's a perfectly legitimate question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you have a follow-up to this? Yeah, my, my follow-up, I guess I have to phrase it a little differently. I was going to say, for both of you, if, if you could choose a universe to mash up with Tenchi Muyo just for the pure shits and giggles, um, which universe would you choose from? Wow. I don't know how to answer that. I don't even know what you mean by that. Like, if you could take the Tenchi Muyo, like, from any of the Tenchi series, any of their parallel verses, if you could take that universe and, and mix it with the universe and lore and characters from another show to create Star Wars or something. Yeah. 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 Crossover. Yeah. That's Dark Galactic. Well, you know, it seems smart. like Tenchi, they they borrowed liberally from <laughs> <laughs> the Star Wars. It got yeah. rather derivative. In fact, I had a, one poster I had at one time. It was practically the same iconic poses. There's Tenchi standing there with the, the hawk sword or whatever, and there's uh, uh, Aika's right here kneeling by his knee. and It was like the same pose as the Star Wars. And I thought, well, you guys are really kind of <laughs> dicey with the stealing here. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Well, yes. uh, this is a question I asked Matt briefly last night, but I also want to address it to you, Trey, as well. 
is uh, again, you when you did, did the voice work, you didn't memorize your lines. You came in there fresh, just not really knowing what to expect in many ways. Uh, when you created that character, created that voice, how did you cho or what made you choose that voice? What made you play Ryoko the way you did? What made you play Tenchi the way you did? What about that character just spoke to you that way? I don't know, I just, uh, it's, it, whenever you walk into a job, voiceover job, and they hand you a, or hand you a, a drawing uh, of the character, uh, it's just up to your imagination to respond to how you think that character would sound. So it's purely instinct, it's just developing your actor instincts and your actor skills. And so you give them a, give them a voice and they'll say, yeah, great, let's go with that. Or they'll say, oh, could you make him uh, higher pitched or could you make him madder or whatever. They might give you some adjustment. Um, rarely do they say, no, that's not right at all, try something else. They may to a degree, but, but you just have to respond to what you're, what you're seeing and the description they give you. So you just you just get a drawing, you get a bio sheet, or just yeah. a drawing. A drawing. Call it a breakdown. Yeah, you might get a breakdown as well, but it's usually the drawing is what helps the most. Yeah. It's like, oh I got it. this guy looks like a warthog with a helmet and you know so I'm gonna <laughs> I know how that sounds. Yeah, I know exactly how to do that, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I um I had done some commercial voiceover, but I had never done any kind of animation and um, I had had a voice coach who taught me a really important thing that I <coughs> tried to use for all auditions, on camera, theater, voice, whatever. Um, she said, she had me at the mic and, and she said, I hear you saying, do you want this? I want to hear you say, look what I've got. And I applied that to Ryoko because I, I thought that's that's who Ryoko is. She's a look what I've got kind of character. <laughs> and uh, she, you know, if you don't want what she's got, she has no interest in you, you know, unless you're Tenchi and then she's like. <laughs> 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 um, but so I applied that and uh, and I also used my own voice pretty much. I mean, I think I sound like her. Yeah, and yes. I, because <laughs> honestly, if you do get the job, you have to be able to repeat that. Um, you have to be able to maintain that character throughout all the recording sessions. So that's what I did. Yeah. Considering your extensive voice acting experience, have you ever considered doing an audio book for Camelot and Vine? I'm about a third of the way through it. Ooh. Just the recording, I haven't gotten to the editing yet. I'm going to have to be my own engineer, and I just dread it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm working on it. Thank you for asking. Yeah, <laughs> okay, well, thanks for coming. You're <laughs> going to record all of our voicemail greetings, right? Yeah. <laughs> ben? Strawberry, chocolate, or vanilla ice cream. Chocolate. Yeah. Good to sit near both and walk Unless away. Unless I can put some stuff on the vanilla, I like vanilla. If I can put junk on. <laughs> I got one other, actually. Outside of Tenshi Movio, have you guys worked together at all? Did we ever do a theater together? I don't think that we did. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> um, so. Did you use your madness? No, but I saw you in it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now that show, the show that Matt was in that ran in Chicago for just forever, yeah. called Sheer Madness. I think they remounted it again. Oh, wow. We're talking about a play that we, that I did in Chicago for a couple of years. It's the longest running non-musical play in U.S. history. It's been running in Boston oh for over 30 years. Oh. Sheer Madness. Yeah, yeah Sheer Madness. Yeah, sure. It's a comedy whodunit. It's very silly, uh, but it's, a, it's fun. Uh, it's been run forever, and it we ran in Chicago for many, many years as well. And I was in it as Cockrum, and we all ran with that same crowd, Steve yeah, Sergus. Uh, yeah. oh. But I don't. So I think it's a long way, of circuitous route to say I don't think we ever did work together I don't think outside so. of Tenchi. Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's having a better time than we are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, has anyone ever, like, ever randomly picked you guys, picked you guys out of a crowd just by your voice, just like in your daily life? Uh, I 
I it happened here. <laughs> <laughs> I got on an elevator and somebody went. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not really random. I don't usually walk around talking like this. So. <laughs> I have seen it uh, several times because I liked it very much. Matt actually has worked in the presence of Tim Curry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did. It was one of those kind of random L.A. things. The, these things happen in L.A. It's, uh, it wasn't even a sort of work. It was, I got a call. I belonged to a theater group, and somebody in that group said, hey, this director uh, named Jonathan Lynn, he directed My Cousin Vinny. I don't know if you guys know that movie. He's done a bunch yeah. of stuff. So he said, I just want to do this reading in my, at my house of uh, the play, Chekhov play Three Sisters. Mm -hmm. I just want to do a reading because I think it would be fun. It's a new adaptation somebody's got. And blah, blah. Okay, sure, fine. So I show up at his house, and uh, there's... Patrick Stewart is reading for shit. <laughs> David Hyde Pierce is reading another role. Tim Curry sitting next to me reading another role. Uh, and some other people you might recognize, might not. But uh, it's just like, oh, all right, here we are. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> hey. We're all just actors. Yeah, we had dinner and we read this play in his living room and had drinks. It was lovely. We all went on our way. <laughs> wow, I got home and I thought, well, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that just happened. Really cool. That just happened. That just happened. Yeah. I actually got a question spawning from that. Uh, did Patrick Stewart happen to mention how he's been able to stay youthful all these years? <laughs> I mean, he's looked the same for the past 45. He has. I mean, if you look at I, Claudius, uh, I, I think, it, did he have hair? I don't think he had hair he's in I, Claudius. He's never had a picture of him with no hair. He's What's that? He's never, he's, he basically has no hair. Yeah, he played Sir Janus in I, Claudius, and that was in the 70s, and I think he was bald then, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, he's looked the same. I saw him in a production, play production, No Man's Land, a Berkeley rap. Was that just last last year, right? Mm -hmm. My wife in the back. My wife Catherine, also accomplished actress. <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, he still looks the same. Yeah. He had a wig on. Really nice looking wig in the show, though. So <laughs> you have seen him with hair. He looks fine. Looks good. It was jarring at first because it's Patrick Stewart, but he had a really good wig. Yeah. 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 Can, can I ask for something really silly? Can you propose to Ryoko? Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 All right. Oh. All right. <laughs> what if Ryoko says no? Yeah. Oh. Oh. That would be so embarrassing. I am so. <laughs> she wouldn't say no. She kind of just please. <laughs> like, like, that really. Actually, Ryoko would propose to him. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. But you know what? She wouldn't say, Will you marry me? She'd say, Marry me! <laughs> <laughs> She'd say, We're married. Yeah. We're getting hitched, Tetris. Yeah, we're getting hitched. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I've got water. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. She'd be carrying the shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So you guys do these events together every so often. So did you two just no? You've never. This is the first one we've ever done together. Done together, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You guys wow. work together. Oh, wow. yeah. So this that is the first one. Be, like asks my question. Then. <laughs> 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 Chibi Pa was like, "Let's get the OTP out here." <laughs> 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 Chibi Pa was like, "Let's get the OTP out here." Well, Jason <laughs> runs the. <laughs> yeah, Jason runs the convention. Said he really specifically wanted the two of us. Mm -hmm. It was his dream for a while to get both of us together. So it's, it's kind of historic. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, history. History, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we'll do it again. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's not a bad idea. I never post anything on Thursday. I always forget it. Friday, I'm looking at everybody's TBT pictures like, oh, I forgot again. You know? <laughs> what did I get that scanner for? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a question, John? Keep looking like yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was, I was trying to think of something good, but I also wanted to just kind of everybody a chance to okay. and try not to rehash well, you know, any interviews. Yeah, you know uh, everything. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I had a pinup of Ryoko in my locker in middle school. 
<laughs> oh. Question, who were your celebrity crushes? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Who were they or who are they? <laughs> <laughs> oh. We were just talking about I did mention this yesterday and it's probably already online. <laughs> um, so I hope my husband doesn't mind. But, uh, my secret boyfriend is Sean Bean. <laughs> so is it tragic when you're like he dies in every movie you ever watch him in? <laughs> yes, and it's become this kind of meme. It is. You know, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but he's, I think he's fantastic. And, and I, uh, I like his work, and he's also a nice looking hunk of man. <laughs> <laughs> so he's my secret boyfriend. Uh, I, back in high school, I was really into Led Zeppelin. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so those were my uh, high school rock star crushes. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, wife, my wife's glaring at me right now. <laughs> She's a celebrity. Like I'm sorry. Yeah, right. She's She's a celebrity. When you have a spouse like Kat, you don't need a pin up. <laughs> oh, nicely played. <laughs> I said that myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, first my wife, and then uh, she knows about this one, the Sandra Bullock or something. Uh, no, true. True. Yeah. She's a great actress, too. And, uh, she's a really good actor. And easy on the eyes. <laughs> You guys are good at sharing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's coming over, you know. Just she's a sort of a personable type. Yeah. 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 I don't know how often she is. By the way, I tweeted both of your crushes about this. No. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe Sandra will hear about it. It's trending. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. Did you ever get a chance to work with the original uh, Japanese voice actors, and what were they like for you guys? No, we didn't get to work with them. We met them, yeah. met some of them. Um, yeah, we had a the, before we really had before I had any idea what this was about. Mm -hmm. We went to a con in uh, I think Anaheim, mm -hmm. California, and um, some of them had come, you know, flown across the ocean to come to this con, and I sat next to Ai Orikasa. And um, I was a little jealous because the guys were just going crazy over her. She's <laughs> darling and cute and has this very sexy voice. <laughs> and she knew how to work it, you know? Uh, she she was it. working it. Yeah. <laughs> she whipped them into a frenzy. She did. Yeah. Don't you have to ask yeah. your wife for that one? I saw a glare. <laughs> Yeah, I was a little like, wait a minute, why is this that? Because I thought you were going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> because over there, I don't know if you guys know, but you know, they're like rock voiceover actors be like rock stars over there, and they're known and recognized and everything over here. Not so much. They don't really know. Yeah. You know, unless you come to a con, and people will know you, maybe recognize you um, visually, but over there, yeah. So I think they were used to doing a lot of events. <clears throat> and knowing how to work that right, crowd yeah. and everything, like, so it's a different culture. I actually think like uh, I'm sorry, no. No? like uh, like voice actors are now getting like a lot more recognition, like you yeah. know because of YouTube and Facebook and so on and so forth. Like I know like you're uh, you have a book out like Sunny Straits doing comics now. Then Dick oh. Monahue is at every convention you can possibly go to in the span of you know a year. So it's all awesome. mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Dick. <laughs> but uh, why don't you guys like do anything like that? Like you know. Maybe like Adventures of Voice Acting, like if they have to do another episode or so on and so forth. I'm not. I'm not sure what you say. Why don't we do something like that? Something yeah, like, like, to, like what? Like publicity, likewise, like to get like back into voice acting if you ever want oh. to do that. Well, I think uh, for myself, I've kind of gone on to another career um, that I enjoy very much. I still do a lot of voiceover in LA, but it's commercial voiceover. Um, I don't have to wear makeup. <laughs> I don't enjoy that. Uh, and, but I don't, I'm not really pursuing acting at this point. Um, if, you know, like I said, if the opportunity arose to do, to do Ryoko again, that would be a different story. But um, I'm actually, you know, I'm pursuing a writing career, which uh, 
doesn't mean I don't like these cons. I do mm -hmm. enjoy this very much. This is really fun and wonderful to meet people who are fans of what we do. But if that answers your question, yeah. uh, I'm not publicizing myself as a voice actor because that's not really what I am anymore. All right. We miss you. Uh, <laughs> what do you say? Thank you. Yeah, and I've done, uh, I, I really sort of rode the, 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 what I thought was the wave of popularity. I. I picked some cons to go to. I didn't like to try to do a million of them. I just wanted to go to certain places and do certain cons. And I really thought the popularity sort of waned there uh, a few, several years ago. And I, so I didn't stop. I, I stopped really pursuing it when I didn't get much reaction back. But there seems to be a resurgence now. So but they're starting to call again. The cons are inviting me. So maybe I'll do more of that sort of publicity. But I've been very busy with theater and uh, I'm also a college theater professor now as well. I teach theater. I act in theater. I'm also a playwright and a director, fight choreographer, so I, I keep busy doing a lot of that. Cool. Wow. Many hats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Have you ever had any business trip to Japan? And if so, what kind of wacky yeah, Japan? What kind of wacky misadventures do you have in Japan? I haven't. I haven't. I'd love to go yeah. to Japan. I was hoping for a lost in translation as it was. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, our lives are not as exciting as Tenji is. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'd love to. Sometimes. I reached out to, when I was going doing a lot of cons, I reached out to Japan, and they didn't really seem as interested in the English yeah, voices. Yeah, I was thinking it would be weird. Yeah. I don't know that they really consume dubbed anime. I, I know. It would be sort of a novelty, I guess, for them to have the English voice, but yeah. why when they've got the original? Yeah. Yeah. So. It's interesting, though, how we like the Japanese voice, but they might not like the American yeah. voice. Yeah. I think a lot of people are really into hearing the original. Mm -hmm. Japanese, um, but to them, hearing the American voice is not hearing the original. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that explains it. Yeah, any purists in the audience, I know sometimes people prefer the subtitles to dubbed mm -hmm. because there is can be something lost in the translation. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard of the Bridge series? <laughs> bridge series? No. Well, it's just a parody where you will take the show <laughs> and then you will will voice over it. But like really crazy things that are like which never happened, edited different things. Oh. And they'll cram a story arc into yeah. about 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, huh. it's the greatest. Haven't, uh, haven't seen any. Other than that, we're finally no show. It's the greatest. Or your yes. Have you ever, well, have you ever, and if not, would you consider cosplaying your characters? <laughs> <laughs> I have not, and it's not really my cup of tea. I don't think I. Although if, if uh, Rachel came along with that wig, I'd put it on and take some pictures in it. <laughs> that was something else. That was yeah. a, that's a great wig. She's gonna love to see. Is she gonna see that? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done too much of it. Uh, I haven't done any of it. Cosplay, I mean, or costumes and shows. But uh, yeah, Tenshi, I don't know. I don't know if I could pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> young. Yeah. Depends on uh, which part of the episode. If he's fighting in space or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the full thing. Yeah. Schoolboy Schoolboy Tenshi. Schoolboy Tenshi. <laughs> Maybe that again. Yeah. Just so you know, if you two did cosplay and go to a convention together, you would break the convention. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Just walk around and hold hands. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. Kenji Muyo uh, OTP future. Wow. Uh, yeah. I think the, I think the spouses would kill you. We would break Twitter, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, 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 I
you sound them. like a bad <laughs> guy. <laughs> I, I dress up for a living and <laughs> I will. I'll tell you what, Kat. We'll get John to come. Okay. And we'll all. You can. Because she dresses Ayata, up. And he can be, you know, like Hatsuma or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like he would ever do that. <laughs> he would never do that. <laughs> My son's really into Pokemon right now. <laughs> do you get more deeply attached to what you say to? Characters you've voice acting because you've been doing it for so long, or do you more easily get attached to the characters you've had to physically act out in your career? Because you seem attached to Rio, but I don't really get the same vibe that you being attached to Tenchi as much. Yeah, I mean, that's that's an interesting question. Just get more attached. I think because we have to use your entire body and voice and everything in theater, I'd probably get more attached to those. Yeah, I, uh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm attached to Ryoko, but some of the theater roles I've played have stuck with me. So what were your favorite roles, like, for each of you? Which character that you've ever had to play meant the most to you? Wow. Probably, offhand, I'd say uh, there's a character named Sam in a play called Fully Committed. Uh, I was talking about this in my other panel, if anybody was there. But uh, it's a play about a guy in the basement of a restaurant who has to take the reservations for this really tony restaurant in Manhattan. So everybody's trying to get into this restaurant. And he comes to work one day, and he's the only one there. Everyone else doesn't show up. So he has to man the phones himself. And all these people are calling in, trying to get in a reservation at this restaurant, desperately. And he, he plays all 40 characters in the play. Oh. It's a one-man show. Wow. And you play all 40 characters uh, by yourself, and uh, it's about an hour and 20 minutes long, and uh, it's a workout. Uh, but talk about using voices and your body to because you have to differentiate so the audience knows exactly who's talking at any one time so you have to really make them distinct and switch between them very quickly so i would say offhand that was probably top of my list sounds like a tour de force yeah it's pretty fun yeah. Yeah. i don't know if i have any one um i've done several shakespeare plays and those are my large roles or small how are we doing for time? Anybody know? We got another 15. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are we going to talk about? Pizza How's the weather today? Yeah, Pizza like topics. Pizza topics. <laughs> 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 well, pepperoni, that's the answer. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing else? No pineapple. Oh, no, God. it's wrong. No pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> not right. It's not right. No fruit on this. Lucky Charms on pizza is delicious. Nice. When you're in the school cafeteria and pizza and cereal all day long, you get it. That sounds like you have. Ketchup on waffles is really good too. Artists are creative. Oh my. <laughs> A lot of people have asked about the new series being made. Uh, Tenchi I or? I Tenchi Muyo. I Tenchi Muyo. And uh, asked if you'd be involved. And uh, it's really out of our hands. I mean, we'd love to. Uh, I guess they're making them. And so I don't think anyone would actually buy it. It wasn't like either at least you, Poison Tenchi. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I sure hope they get more involved. Yeah, thank you. I hope they at least approach us. Everybody to the internet and make a petition. Yeah, start one. Start an online petition. We actually already started a petition. There is one. There is one already. Yeah, one. Forum has one. These guys are on top of it. Bring back, bring back the original English cast. There you go. Google that, you'll find it. Is that on your website? We have a link on the Facebook somewhere, I think. I don't know if you have that on the site. Re-amp it, get it up front. Yeah. Tenchi Forum. 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 We can't stop and ask why we do what we do. We just <laughs> play this player. Just, <laughs> it's pretty heavily implied, but it is never the most definitive answer. I think you could definitely make some comparisons with the how Nobuyuki met Achika with the sketchbook, and he, you know, Nobuyuki's drawing, and then at the very end of the third movie, Tenchi is also drawing, and Ryoko approaches from behind, and they have 
very similar colors, very similar shot composition. So it's pretty much just constant wink, wink, nut yet. You know it's going to happen, but there was never any official confirmation that that was going to happen. That's part of the magic, though, is it's never just like, well, well that's it. this and deal with it, you know. Right. It's not like here it is. It's always a little wiggle room if you're an Aika rooter. You there you go. Hold on, hold on a minute. And there are some. <laughs> yeah, they're out there. <laughs> yeah, Sasami has a lot of uh, support. Yes. That's just creepy. <laughs> 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 I know, it's a little bit. She's a couple hundred years She's a couple hundred years older, yeah. Is she? She was in cryogenic. <laughs> the second episode of the OBA, first OBA. There you go. When they come out of the three chambers. She's a kid, don't try to wiggle out of it. That's yeah, all yeah, yeah. Like 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 what I'm the question? Uh, not in tissue related, but where do you see yourself in five years? That's a deep question. <laughs> <laughs> I see myself um, as an established author with uh, books available and and paying for, you know, a fabulous retirement in a <laughs> lovely beach community. No, I don't know. Actually, I do kind of picture relaxing a little um, and being able to travel some. Yeah, uh, produce playwright, tenured professor, classical theater actor. <laughs> Good luck on that tenure part. Yeah. Sorry. Good luck on that tenure part. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. How would you get into writing? Uh, I was always a writer. My mother was a writing teacher, and I started writing when I was a kid. And I majored in it in college. So. I guess that's my best answer. When I came to a point in my acting career where I wasn't satisfied with it anymore, I had already been writing uh, a regular column on an actor's website, and that was called Act As If. And that column kind of transitioned me into full-time writing because it transitioned me out of acting into writing. I was still writing about acting, but... Um, that that's the book I just am about to release. You can actually get the ebook already. Uh, Act as if colon stumbling through Hollywood with headshot in hand, and it's about the life of a journeyman actor in Hollywood. Just what it's like to be out there auditioning and pounding the pavement. And, but anyway, that's how I got into it. I kind of had always been a writer, but I transitioned uh, more fully as I started losing interest in acting. When you get older, when you get past 50 in Hollywood, look around you, look at the TV, and see how many female yeah, actors over yeah. 50 that you see. Uh, TV, film, whatever, there just aren't very many. There's Meryl Streep, there's Glenn Close. Jodie Foster? Jodie Foster is 50? No, <laughs> Oh Did my gosh. Sure? Sandra Bullock is 50. These, these are women who look 40. <laughs> Jodie Foster and, and Those are Sandra stars. Bullock. Those are stars. But I'm talking about the actors who, you know, play the mom or the neighbor or the cab driver or the receptionist. Um, the, the, I wasn't even being offered those roles anymore. You know, you, you hit 50 and you're not even getting those. Those are for the 40-year-old actresses. So, the, yeah, it's, I said this earlier. Uh, in the first day Q&A, acting is hard. And I don't mean the actual acting, although you train and you learn how to do it, but just the business of acting, of finding work, is hard. And when it comes to a point where it's no longer rewarding, and the stuff you're getting offered is you know, a line here and there that you don't even get to develop a two-minute character, and you still need to pay the bills, you lose interest. You know, I could still do theater, but theater is also very hard. Um, it has to be rewarding. You have to be passionate. And I was just losing my passion. 
that's a longer answer than you were looking for. <laughs> no, no, it was actually very longer. Yeah. But I'm passionate about writing, and I always have. Been. And I think maybe I have found my calling. I'm a writer. Yeah, if you love what you do, you're gonna work a day in your life, right? Yes, yeah. that's it. That's true. That's it. Now, I've been very lucky. I've had a, always had a nice career uh, in theater, some film, some TV. But it's been primarily and a lot of voiceover, uh, but uh, there's always been that in the background is theater, classical theater, uh, and I've always been able to find work. And uh, but discovered writing, not discovered writing. I've always kind of been writing, yeah. as well. but been doing a lot of writing as well. It's very gratifying. You have control, you know, and when you're pursuing your acting career, you have so little control. You have to wait for somebody else to produce something before you can try to get in, yeah. to be in it, work in it. With writing is wonderful because you create everything yourself. You have control over it, over your destiny, and then it's up to you to push. Yeah, you're the producer. Yeah, you're the producer. Get it out there, get it uh, made, get it published or produced or whatever. Um, acting is so itinerant. And uh, um, it's a it's a tough life. Yeah, yeah. Like you say, the acting itself could be great. I remember, um, was it uh, uh, what's her name? It just slipped out of my head. Uh, Witches of Eastwick. Uh, uh, sure. No. Uh, uh, huh? Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. She said once, you know, I I get uh, I act for free. I get paid millions of dollars to put up with all the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's and it's true. The, the tough stuff is finding the work. The acting is great, but yeah, the, the, that's exactly it. The pursuit is what grinds you down if, if you if you're not careful. Like Angelina Jolie just retired, saying she never really loved acting. Mm -hmm. and I was like, wow. Interesting. I didn't know she retired. Yeah, she announced like a couple days ago. Uh -huh. yeah. She said that. She never really loved it. Never really loved it. Wow. And I'm like, mm -hmm. good fool to us. Yeah, and apparently she did. Yeah. That's called acting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, she didn't say she wasn't good at it. She just said she didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Academy Award, Golden Globes. Yeah, Academy Award. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, if you do, I don't know, I don't get into this too much, but you know, film acting, that can really be a grind. Cause you have no control, even with the acting, you have no control. Because remember, theater is the actor's medium, film is a director's medium, and television is the writer's medium. And what I mean by that is, a film is totally controlled by the director. You can do the greatest take in the world and be brilliant, but the, the director looks at the post and says the lighting is wrong. I have to use this other take. So your best you, take is... Yeah, so you think that take sucked. I hated that take, but he had to use it because the lighting was right, and the sound was this, and the and he needed this shot. And so your best performance in the world, and very many, and these stories are legion of performances ending up on the cutting room floor, too. Uh, you know, and one, one of the few films I did, I was cut out of. So, <laughs> you know, it does, it, you have no control. So I can see where after a while, I remember, uh, I think it was Liam Neeson said after the, one of those Star Wars, the new ones, you know, that he did, everyone hates. He said after that experience, he said, I'm done. I don't want to act anymore. Mm. It was such an unpleasant experience that he just said, I'm, I'm through. Right? He's obviously changed his mind, but you can imagine how bad an experience that must have been for him to come out of that and say that. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't want to be in a movie with Jar Jar Binks either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, you know, that's why theater can really recharge you, and why a lot of actors, a lot of stars, will go back to Broadway and do a play, because it is so invigorating. You have that synergistic relationship immediacy with an audience and what energy they're giving you you give back it's a, it's participatory all this tv and film is passive you just sit there and watch it and you don't have to participate in theater you participate whether you realize it or not even if you're sitting in the dark we feel you absolutely we and you react or don't react whatever it is so that's why it's the father of the art Sorry, it's my soapbox. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs>
that it's mostly in LA? Let me tell you something. You, uh, if you're interested in become, becoming a voice actor, making your living as a voice actor, uh, you're going to have to supplement that. Well, most I'm likely. interested because I enjoy it. It's there you go. Yeah. Okay. I prepare cell phones for it. You can do that anywhere. Uh, the central location for anime is either Texas or California. Central location for animation is still California. Um, but I, th I predict that pretty quickly it's going to be anywhere. Because where you can go like to a subsidy studio. Exactly. I know people, I have a very good friend, she makes a very good living at voiceover. She lives in rural Michigan. Mm -hmm. She has an in-house studio she's built for herself. Not incredible, but she's put invested in it, good equipment. And she hustles, and you can do it now. She does commercial work. She does books on tape. She does she does it all, and she does it from Michigan. So it's recording demos and pushing them. It's yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard of people doing animation that way. No, not too much animation. Because you have to do it to picture. Yeah. Or uh, that would be dubbing, well, but you still are going to have some picture. Yeah. Um, but like commercials would probably be a good place to try. And, and there are plenty of websites now that, that so you don't have to be. Uh, there's one, two, three. ACX is a books on tape one where you can submit. You don't have to be a union or anything. Submit your audition for books, and you're up there with everybody else. You'll get paid. Mm -hmm. uh, ACX. You make a deal with the author or the publisher on ACX, mm -hmm. and it's non-union. Um, they do union stuff now. Do they? So, yeah. Oh, okay. As well. So it can be done. Yeah. But I would highly recommend that you. You become a, a well-rounded actor. You already are. You're doing theater. You know, do more than the one thing because I think you're uh, you're going to find that all those other things feed into what you're doing. I think I'm actually going to start flattening some of my rounded edges because the last play I was in was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's called "Let My People Come" and uh, we were all dancing. Dude. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. Anything wrong with that? <laughs> no, there was nothing wrong with it. It no. was just I feel very well rounded after. <laughs> <laughs> Let my people know. Wow. Okay. Run. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, so that was your advice for like voice actors and actors. But what about for writers? Do you have any individual advice for writers in particular? I still think you have to be well rounded. Uh, my experience has been that uh, I have done best as a novelist, but I've also been a columnist. I've written uh, features for websites. Uh, all those things have helped me become a better writer. I don't know. If there's only one thing you want to do, then do it. What do I know? You should do the thing that you're driven to do. But I think you may find along the way that uh, people will be looking for your resume, what do you have on it, have you written for this site, this site, this site, or this magazine, or this newspaper, or have you written fiction, nonfiction? You know, I, you just start to, I think, round off your edges like he said, you know, and you try different stuff until you find the, the thing. Is that? And yeah, and writing sense? is great because you can do that from anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. As well, and there's so much stuff in the internet. You guys are so lucky to have the internet for, as a resource. You know, you don't have to do the traveling we used to do. Okay, so I think we're, we're done. at an hour. Yeah. Done an hour. Okay. Thank Thanks very much for coming, guys. For we'll be at the closing ceremonies at five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll be around too. Yeah. It's a whole dish. Mm -hmm. okay.